Guys, before we move on, I have to tell you something though that I uh, well didn't talk about in the intro, um, and that's something related to birthdays. Yes, you've heard it, you've heard it. Um, it seems that um, I forgot to tell you that uh, two days prior there was, I mean there were two birthdays for two siblings to be fair Linny and Lynette but I'm tackling their birthday for you guys so that it is shown in the video for, pos for posterity so there it is <laughs> so uh, let's start with uh, Linny first. A birthday surprise. Let's prepare a birthday surprise for Lynette. It may sound easy, but it's surprisingly difficult. We celebrate our birthdays together every year, so it's incredibly tricky to hide a ploy like a surprise party from her. All we can do is misdirect and make ultimate preparations. For example, this year, I'd like to invite a surprise guest. That's right, it's you. Uh, she's managed to figure out all the surprises ahead of time the last few years, though she did try hard to feign ignorance. But if I can get you to come this year, that will be the best surprise yet. What do you think? Do you have time? I've already come up with an amazing match trick for you. For you, <laughs> I've already come up with an amazing magic magic trick. For your big entrance, all we need to do is rehearse it a bit. Okay, I'll be there. So the Lumitus Bell, which are related to is uh, essential materials, and the Cubit Tricks, which is uh, Lini's specialty. All right, Cubit Tricks increases all party members' trick rate by twenty percent. And crit damage by 20% also for 300 seconds. Nice! That's a... Nice, that's a nice recipe, to be honest. Okay. Crit rate and crit damage. 20, by 20% 20 for 300 seconds. Jimmy Jimmy. Uh, Linny's specialty. He covered the fruit you picked with velvet and then uncovered it. Voila! You were greeted by a colorful assortment of gummies. You sampled one and your mood immediately changed. Did the great magician cast some incredible enchantment spell to bewitch the heart while no one was watching? Happy birthday, Lenny. Happy birthday. Was on the 2nd of February. So yeah, like I said, two days pr two days prior. Two days prior to the time that you're seeing uh, this. This is related to my stream of the fourth of February. So yeah. As for Lynette, a birthday surprise. Well, they have the the. Wait. So, this is a birthday <laughs> surprise with an exclamation mark, but this is just a birthday surprise dot dot dot. Okay, skipping the formalities, Lini's and my birthday is here. This, the, the year before last, his surprise was a present hidden inside the cage, and last year, it was for Roseland to pop out of the hat with colored flags. My presents are much more ordinary. No matter how much effort I put in, he'll always guess it. It's like I can guess his plans. But he seems to, to really enjoy it all the same. Whatever floats his boat. I was planning to just go ahead and buy it to myself this year, but I feel like Lini is most likely planning to pass to you to help him with a whole pile of schemes. If that really does happen, can you hum humor him a bit? 
I'll do my best to pretend not to know anything. <laughs> so yeah, she's quite uh, perceptive. She definitely knows that Lumi will uh, do everything in order to to make Lena to feel happy. So she knows that <laughs> you'll invite me. Yeah, yeah, Lena is quite clever. And a girl. So her essential material materials this time around are rainbow roses. Right. And a leisurely sip. Look at the coffee. I mean yeah, I think it's coffee, right? Oh no, it's tea. Okay. Biscuits. Alright. Uh, increases all party members' healing bonus by 25% for 300 sections. Lynette's special tea. It was time for afternoon tea, and Lynette laid down a snack made specially for you. The image of the young lady who taking small sips from the cup, and who taking who is taking small sips from the cup. And the image of the kitten shit doesn't seem to overlap. Ah. So your heart was filled with sweetness, but you were also a bit concerned about the state of the kitchenware. Yikes. So those are Linny and Lynette. I wanted to get them featured, so that's that I suppose. <laughs> All right, now let's move on to the quest. Osmanthus wine tastes the same as I remember. But where are those who share the memory? I guess uh, we'll see what this is all about, Jean Lee. Right now. Huh? A golden cart? Seems quite similar to the adept energy that the adept is trying to do, don't you think? Yes, indeed. Oh, this. Where? Where? No, it's just taking the bridge. You want me to fight? Then it seems alright. I'll indulge you. Is it done? <clears throat> Are we alright? So I have to take this. And I have to put it here. Welcome back. <laughs> Limo, Paimon, you two are indeed brilliant as expected. Upon seeing my dissipated adaptal energy, you immediately understood the situation. Yes, we did. Of course. We are super duper experienced adventurers, you know. Still, why didn't you say something sooner? You didn't just forget, did you? Um, <laughs> gotta say, she's one of the mo the prettiest NPCs of the game. Close my mind. <clears throat> About that, should not the path of the adept high be full of challenges? It is merely a test of your wisdom. Uh, call me the master taste teacher. Speaking of which. Of which, just what's the problem with the soil and water you mentioned before? Grandpa Lou was also sure that this was behind the deteriorating quality of the tea leaves. Yes, 
You too have seen Shao and Village. Should the quality of Grand Teal tea leaves continue to decline, so will the village until finally, in the years to come, it generates back into what it was long before a desolate mountain forest. Well, I understand what you mean. <sighs> it's trying hard to wrap your brain around. Can Bat Tea really destroy Shao and Village? <laughs> It is true. The Lord of Jiu would not stand idly by as the disaster befell. With a strike to collapse, the country of demons and other adepti would do their utmost to support it. Should the waters in the Yellow Wharf breach the dikes and flood, Liu Halber would aid the villagers. But without tea, the stretch of mountains would, or Chowan village rather, would lose its very reason to its system, human eyes. That made sense. When you put it like that, Paimon understands. So, are you two willing to help me correct the, imbal the imbalance in the water and soil? <laughs> what do you say, Minipai? Who the heck is Minipai? Never heard the name before. <laughs> The Paimon wants to help Adeptus Fujin and Chiron Village when she thinks about such delici delicious tea cakes being lost forever just because there's no good tea. Would be a bit shame, wouldn't it? Yeah. Tea cakes. Yes. That's excellant. <clears throat> Your willingness is commendable, and one is quite grateful to you both. Now, back to business. When it comes to how to resolve the disharmony in the soil and water, one is indeed well aware of what to do. First, you two must go up against the currents and seek the jade treasures thrown into the waters. In the end, we must perform the ancient rain jade rites once more, dispelling the miasma that has settled over the mountains and fields and into the rivers, and restoring the water veins and soil. Okay, got it. But, um, just how do we do the ritual? Hmm. That is for Jin? What's wrong? Oh, nothing. As for the ritual, it's still a bit early for that. Well then, we'll see each other later. And she's gone. According to her, we need to go against the current. That just means upstream, right? Hey, that's the same direction as Yulon Wharf. Let's go! Yeah, I was going this way anyway, so... Ooh... So, Fujin noticed that. Where was it? Was it? Wait. Is that the sold story? Oh, didn't, expect, didn't want to do that, but... Okay. Um... Is that the so was that the solitary swanee? Maybe? Or an underling of the solitary swanee? I uh, wouldn't be surprised in the slightest. As time goes on, I suppose. These pine cones. <laughs> Soon arrive to Yellow Wharf. <coughs> uh, you can already see Yellow Wharf from this distance, and as I said before, it's quite a sight with the waterfalls and the waterworks. Quite uh, fontaine esque dynamics here. See the, the lift here? Interesting. 
Also, yeah, that might be uh, some uh, thing that could be reminiscent of uh, one shoot in as well. We have the lift there. Yearlong Wharf. We're here. We are here. And you see these big boats over there, so. Ooh. Look at the ambiance here at night. I'll go down there as well, but. Um, I went up there before. I guess I'll just uh, just let you look at it. So, it was, um, it was, a uh, higher. I went to a place over that way. It seemed higher. Technically, um, when I went up uh, up. It showed me two persons, um, two people, and they were talking about incense. But I don't know how I. Oh, it's here. It's here. Okay. So, yeah. Let's have a have a look for you guys. Albeit, I'm sure that you've already seen you've already seen this place, but yeah, these two here, and the fact that uh, you can have a nice perspective. So you did all this. So yeah, this is a this is a nice viewpoint. So as you can see on the map, we are at the intersection. I, I unlocked all the waypoints, even this one that's not in the part of the map that I've unlocked. But yeah, still missing four waypoints here. I'm going to get today or rather tonight um but yeah I guess uh, boats are made for transferring commodities back go there. And forth. 